More extreme weather and soaring temperatures. The World Meteorological Organization says the global weather pattern, El Nino, has returned for the first time since 2016. So what could this mean on the weather outlook here? For that, we've reached Dave Phillips. He's the senior climatologist and environment and Climate Change Canada. He joins us now in Barrie, Ontario. Thanks for making time for us. Well, thank you. Nice to be uh, with you, Arthi, and talk about the... Canadians love to talk about the weather. It's either <laughs> too hot outside or now the El Nino. Hey, it's uh, it's it's always sub a subject that Canadians um, feel comfortable with. You know, and and often Canadians also catch themselves because we feel like we don't get enough heat. So you don't want to complain about it. But maybe you should break down for us whether or not that heat, milder temperatures, especially when we're talking about winter. What does El Nino mean for Canadians? Well, Arthi, I think you, you hit it right. I mean, it is an idea that we've always had in the past that it seems to affect our winters more than our summers. Now, a couple of reasons for that is that most often El Nino appears not now, it appears later in the season, maybe six months from now, October, November. And so it has an impact uh, in Canada um, uh, towards the in the winter period. Now, generally what it means is that we have a, what our ancestors would call an open and soft kind of winter. It tends to be milder uh, and less less snow. For example, I just give you an illustration. If you took the prairies, I looked at the uh, 50 years of, of El Nino weather, and uh, in that those years, 14 were milder than normal winters, and three were colder. So no guarantee doesn't mean everyone's going to be that. Sometimes you can be surprised. At the same time, 13 were were drier, less snow. And, and four had more snow, more precipitation. So, you know, those kind of, of, of scores uh, really tell you, you'd, you'd bet a few, few dollars on the fact that, hey, when it, you have an El Nino, especially, Artsy, uh, that when they're, they're supersized, like this one is expected to be, or very intense, um, that really gives you more, increases your batting average in terms of getting the forecast right for the winter. Now, in the, in the summer, we don't know. We, we have a, certainly a feeling that in terms of Atlantic hurricanes, it tends to make uh, fewer Atlantic hurricanes when you have um, um, uh, El Nino uh, because the, we don't have favorable winds. The winds blow across the Atlantic and they cut off the tops of these uh, thunderstorms that are wanting to become hurricanes. So you have fewer. On the other hand, Arthi, the water temperatures are so warm right now in the Atlantic and the Pacific and the Indian Ocean that that really causes more of these. So it, it's, you know, you win on one score and you lose on the other. So we're not sure how this will play out, for example, for this year in terms of, um, of, of earthquakes, but certainly uh, in terms of uh, hurricanes. But certainly it means perhaps more saving money on your home heating bill. Uh, it means easier getting around. Uh, it usually means less flooding because in the spring, because you have less precipitation. So these all things are important to us, but they tend to be more of a cold season because that is where in the past when most of the El Ninos uh, uh, appeared. You know, let's talk for a moment, too, about these weather patterns, because, you know, it's kind of off and on for years. We talk about El Nino, then we talk about La Nina. What is the cycle right. here of, of what we're expecting to come back in terms of El Nino? What is that pattern like? Well, that's a good point. Now, I think in most recent years, we've had more La Ninas than El Ninos. Now, if you look over a long period, say 70 years, uh, typically an El Nino and a La Nina come around every seven years, five to seven years. They last for about uh, nine months to 12 months. But we saw this, Arthi, this, this is the, uh, recently we had three, uh, three La Ninas in a row, like a three-peat. And the last uh, significant El Nino was 2016. And that was the year the world was the warmest ever it's been in, in, in modern history, in last, say the last 140 years. So a lot of uh, scientists are suggesting that this, what that means for this year, 2023, but probably more likely 2024, is the fact that we will observe the warmest temperature ever for planet Earth in, in say, a century and a half. So, so that's significant. But the other thing that's a little bit sort of questionable is that El Nino is occurring at a time, R.C., when the, um, when the water temperatures, they're like hot tubs out there. I'm not speaking of El Nino water. I'm speaking of waters in other ocean basins like the Atlantic 
and across the Pacific, not just in the area of, the, of, of South America and also the Indian Ocean. The oceans have never been warmer in our recorded history. And so this sort of throws a little bit of, you're not sure how uh, El Nino will behave. Will that mean that it'll be bigger, badder, and more impactful? We don't know, but it is a, a consideration. Because most El Ninos, they're predictable, but they're not, their personality can change. They're, they can all be a little different. And so that is the challenge, is to figure out how this one's going to play out and what impacts it will have on on the world, because in some areas it causes more flooding, more droughts here, but generally causes warmer temperatures. You never hear of anybody saying, oh, mm -hmm. it's so cold because of El Nino. No, it just works again uh, against what the, uh, what the physics are with regards to El Nino and warmer temperatures and over the water and also warmer air. And, you know, Dave, I can't uh, let you go without asking you about uh, the air quality, the wildfire season in Canada, whether or not that's linked to the weather patterns we're seeing in, in, in that sense, in terms of El Nino and, and those sorts of weather patterns, because we are seeing extraordinarily high temperatures, uh, you know, premature wildfire season in this country and that, you know, terrible air quality then that's traveling south. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a safer connection between um, what we're seeing in Canada this year with regards to the forest f uh, fires, the smoke, the unprecedented year it's been, and, and, and climate change, but not necessarily El Nino. Um, I mean, that may be a factor, but it's more the fact that the world is warmer now everywhere, and what we're seeing, our forests are growing uh, more, we're seeing more evaporation, and, um, and, and it really we also see more, more winds, changeable winds, more more, more um, what we call uh, blocking situations where you get so much weather for, for two months in a row, the same weather, and then, and then too little weather. So it really creates the more weather extremes and also climate events. But I think it's more of a connection with climate change and our forest fire situation rather than pin, pin the responsibility on El Nino or La Nina. Thank you for your time today, Dave. We appreciate it. Okay, Arthi, bye-bye now. That was Dave Phillips in Barrie, Ontario.